What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Dan Tam Ray Mello. You listen to the Entertainment Report for Tuesday, November 4, 2014, delivering some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook or on Twitter, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R A Y M E L O, or on Twitter at the Entertainment Report. You can also listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just search for the Entertainment Report. It'll take you to the page where you can listen to any of the previous episodes of the show. Clay Aiken is a runner-up once again. The 35-year-old American Idol alum had been projected to lose the incumbent uh, rep, Renee Elmers, who is a Republican in North Carolina in his bid for a seat in the House. According to the Associated Press, Elmers is leading Aiken's 56% to 44% on Tuesday evening, giving Elmers her third term, representing North Carolina's 2nd District. Elmers had maintained a lead throughout the campaign, according to The Hill. And what may have been a bad omen for Aiken, his campaign buzz broke down while he was leaving a polling place Tuesday morning and had to be towed off the road. Aiken, a Democrat and a Rayleigh, North Carolina native, was declared the winner of his party's primary in May when his opponent, Keith Crisco, died six days after the primary uh, from injuries sustained in an accidental fall. Crisco had been set to con- concede the day after his death. This was the first political run for the singer, best known for coming in second to Ruben Stutter on American Idol's second season. Had he defeated Elmer's, Aiken would have been the first, have been the South's first openly gay representative. It's official. Taylor Swift's 1989 debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 Albums chart with the largest sales week for an album since 2002. 1989 sold 1.287 million copies in the week ending November 2nd, according to Nielsen Sound Scan. 1989 is Swift's fifth studio album and was released October 27th through Big Machine Records. It's her fourth number one album following Red in 2012, Speak Now 2010, and Fearless 2008. Here are some other of the achievements Swift has earned with the debut of 1989. The largest sales uh, week for an album since June 2, 2002, when Eminem's The Eminem Show sold 1.322 million in its second week, uh, second chart week at number one. The album debuted atop the chart a week earlier, selling 285,000 copies after it was released on a Friday, giving the album only three days of sales in its chart bow. So if it's the only act to earn 3 million selling weeks with an album. She also racked up million selling weeks. It was the debut of Reds, which showed which, which sold 1.208 million um, copies, and Speak Now, which sold 1.047 million copies. She was already the only woman to have 2 million selling frames. In 1989, is immediately the biggest selling album released in 2014 and the only one to sell a million in total after only a week in sales. It jumped ahead of Coldplay's Ghost Stories, which had sold 745,000 copies. Incredibly, after just one week on sales, 1989 is the second largest selling album of 2014 behind only the Frozen soundtrack. The latter has sold $3.2 million this year. It was released in November 2013 and has sold $3.5 million of 3.5 million copies, culminably. 1989 and Frozen are the only two albums to sell a million copies in 2014. 1989 is just the 19th album to sell a million copies in a week since SoundScan started tracking sales in 1991. Over the last 4 million selling weeks, which have all occurred since 2010, three of them are owned by Swift. The rest of the new, top, uh, the new Billboard 200 charts top 10 will be revealed on Wednesday. Lawyers representing Nina Dunham have sent a letter demanding a conservative organization apologize for a story that infers the entertainer sexually molested her little sister when they were children. The four-page letter obtained exclusively by the Hollywood Reporter also threatens to sue the organization called Truth Revolt for millions of dollars because its story widely uh, decimated once it was linked at the Drudge Report damaged Dunham's reputation. Last week, Truth Revolt published an article quoting Dunham's book, not that kind of girl, when she says that when she was seven, she leaned down between the legs of her one-year-old sister and carefully spread open her vagina. Also relying on passages from the book, the Truth Revolt article states, Dunham explained, described experimentally sexually with her younger sister, Grace, with whom she says she attempted to persuade to kiss her using anything a sexual parator might do. The article prompted a harsh reaction from Dunham and her sister via Twitter, and the creator and star of the HBO comedy Girls apparently also engaged her attorney at Harder, Myrell, and Abrams. 
um, attorney Charles Harder wrote in his letter to True for both the story is false, fabricated, and the obvious tendency to subject my client to ridicule and to injure her and her reputation. True for Vol has been roughly described as a conservative version of Media Matters for America and is run by talk show host and writer Ben Shapiro. Perhaps best known in Hollywood for his release of audio recordings, he says, prove many in the TV industries are hostile to conservatives and insert liberal messages into their program. True for Vol is a project of the David Horowitz Freedom Center and the letter from Harder was sent to both Shapiro and David Horowitz as well as their attorneys. Contacted by phone, Shapiro had no comment on what he called the cease and desist letter, though he has written about it at the Truth Revolt website. He wrote, We refuse to withdraw our story or apologize for running it because quoting a woman's book does not constitute a false story, even if she is a prominent actress and left-wing activist. Lena Dunham may not like our interpretation of her book, but unfortunately for her and her attorneys, she wrote that book and the First Amendment covers a good deal of material she may not like. Harder and other representatives for Dunham did not return calls for comment. In his letter, Harder demands Shapiro and Horowitz immediately print a prominent public apology and retraction at all media whereat you publish the story. He also suggests the text of such an apology. We recently published a story stating that Ms. Dunham engaged in sexual conduct with her sister. The story was false and we deeply regret having printed. We apologize to Ms. Dunham, her sister, and their parents for this false report. The letter says that remedies to Dunham includes actual damages to her personal and professional reputation, which likely will be calculated in the millions of dollars, punitive damage, which can be a multiple of up to 10 times actual damage, and injective relief. The letter also says that the true revolt story contains, quote, outright falsified statements that are attributed to Dunham and her book. Uh, it states, the statement does not appear anywhere in the book, thus showing intent to harm, knowing falsity, as well as reckless re disregard for the truth, any one of which meets the malice requirement. Marisha Gay Harden has landed a ma major recurring role on Shonda Rhimes' rookie ABC legal drama, How to Get Away with Mur Murder. Details on the role Harden is playing is be kept under wraps, but the veteran actress is expected to first appear when Murder returns for its mid-season finale. Harden's casting keeps her firmly in the ABC family as he's, she starred in the network's short-lived comedy Trophy Wife opposite Bradley Whitfield and Melian Ackerman. A lot of time has opted not to renew the supernatural witch drama The Witches of Each End for a third season ending the one-hour series running a run after two seasons. Which is centered on a family of witches led by Julia Armand, Rachel Boston, Jenna Dewan Tatum and Mad Chen Amick. Eric Winter, Daniel Diatomamaso, uh, and Christian Cook also started in the series loosely based on Mich Melissa De La Cruz's novels that was developed by Maggie Friedman. Fox 21 and Three Arts produced the series, which is first season averaged 3 million viewers, 1.7 million of them in the advertising coveted adults 18 to 49 demographic when DVR is factored in. When it returned for its sophomore run earlier this year, it bled viewership ending the season with just a little more than one million to the two hour October third finale in the same day ratings. These comes more than two weeks after the A and E Network's own cable company uh, cable network canceled struggling rookie dystopian thriller The Lottery. Lifetime's script slated included Unreal Damon Damien, a six hour Lizzie Borden miniseries with Christina Ritchie and the newly renewed Devious maids. Drama pilots at the network included the clan of the cave bear. Universal has staked out the date of Friday, April 21st, 2017 for its second monster franchise film. In July, the studio announced plans for an Avengers-style universe based on its collection of iconic monsters including Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Invisible Man, Bride of Frankenstein, and the Mummy. Alex Kurtzman, um, who directed Star Trek, and Chris Morgan, who directed Fast and the Furious were hired to oversee the new franchise and will be bringing back to life many classic monsters that have graced the screen over the years. The action adventure franchise will relaunch with The Mummy to be directed by Kurtzman and hitting theaters on June 24, 2016. The untitled film currently has the April 21, 2017 date of release. Six months after he announced his departure from Fox Broadcast Company, TV, uh, veteran TV executive Kevin Riley is taking the creative reins at Turner Entertainment. The job, which will be broader than predecessor Michael Wright's Turner Post, 
will have Riley focus on cable behemoths, TNT and TBS with additional oversights within the business. It will remain Los Angeles-based, reported, reporting to T uh, Turner Broadcast President David Levy with the title of President of TBS and TNT and Chief Creative, Creative Officer for Turner Entertainment. Levy said in the November 4th statement, Kevin is one of the most respected, innovative, and influential executives in the television industry, and he's joining Turner Broadcast, Broadcasting at the ideal time for him and for the networks. Kevin brings a tremendous uh, track record of success, not only in terms of programming hits, but also in the new media arena, where he's among the first broadcast network executives to push for meaningful investments in digital and social media. He has never shied away from taking bold programming risks and being a true champion of quality television. And on top of all, he's an inspiring leader whose energy, creativity, and style are a perfect fit for Turner's flagship entertainment network. You two is heading back to the Tonight Show after...